OK, what we're going to look at now is very quickly how to do a least time rendezvous plot. Okay. Now, a least time rendezvous will generally have the following typical scenario in which two vessels will be agreeing to rendezvous. One of them will require some form of assistance. They will generally keep their main, uh, maintain their course and speed or keep their course and speed because they're already heading towards somewhere that can help them generally. They don't want to waste any time altering to go somewhere else and find later that they can't get helped. So one will have to alter course, the other will maintain their course and speed. Generally in the question, you will be given the positions of both vessels, the speed and possibly sometimes the course of your own vessel or a vessel that's going to be altering course. That course is kind of put in there as a bit of a red herring. Okay. Finally, you'll be given the target vessel's course and speed, the vessel that's going to maintain its course and speed. Okay. Generally speaking, we can do this with plain sailing formula because usually we're not going more than 600 miles. That being said, sometimes there will be occasions where it may be more than 600 miles and you would have to use Mercator. I personally would advocate using plain sailing wherever you can rather than Mercator if you can go it because it's less than 600. More than 600, obviously, we're going to have to, to use Mercator. We don't have a choice in that. The general plotting sequence for a rendezvous then. We start by calculating the range and bearing between the two vessels. So you've got position A, you've got position B. And what we do is calculate a line of constant bearing between them. In other words, just do a sailing between the start point for one vessel and the start point for the other. Get the bearing and distance and draw yourself a sketch out to represent this. What we would then do is pick a point T, okay, for the target vessel. Now you have to make sure this is in the correct uh, position relevant to the other vessel. It's quite common that people get the course and speed of the other vessel plotted from the other vessel's position and so on, rather than the road position. So we lay off the speed for one hour on the course given, and that gives us the rendezvous position. We then lay off the course and speed of the other vessel, uh, sorry, the speed of the other vessel, back across the initial line of constant bearing to get position O. And that gives us the vector O to R, which is our course to steer at the rendezvous. If you think, if the rendezvous is the point where we meet, then if the vessel here that's in uh, orange, maintaining its course and speed, if we had that course and speed ran back for an hour, we're trying to rendezvous. We're trying to, basically, we're trying to hit them. We're trying to get there. Everything's instantaneous, like in radar plotting. So we want to try and keep that line of constant bearing, because a line of constant bearing, risk of collision exists, if range is decreasing, which it is here. We're trying to get to them, basically. So we would have had to have been where O was if they were where T was in order to get to where R is in an hour's time. What we've essentially done here, the same as you do with your tides and everything like that, we've just laid off a one hour vector triangle. We can do this anywhere on the plotting sheet. So what we do, measure the true course to steer, O to R, and that will tell you the course to steer. The question will then ask, Find the time of the rendezvous. Well, to do that, all you do is measure O to T on your plot, and that gives you the relative closing speed. If you've got a relative closing speed of 10 miles, and at the start you calculated you were 100 miles apart, if you're 100 miles apart and every hour you close by 10 miles, it's going to take you 10 hours to get there. Just do the initial distance divided by the closing speed, and that tells you the time to rendezvous. Once we know the time to rendezvous, we can calculate the position of the rendezvous. If we done it using the target vessel's position, course and speed, it's all the original information in the question. You haven't brought any errors into it. If you use your vessel's course and speed that you calculated, then obviously if there's any inaccuracies in the plot or you've rounded anything, everybody's going to get different answers. So what we're going to do is use the steaming time that we just calculated by doing the distance divided by the closing speed, and then we're going to take that and calculate how far the vessel would have traveled in that time. 
So if it was 10 hours and it was doing seven knots, for example, it would have traveled 70 miles. Whatever course it was on, we can then do some plain sailing and reverse the formula or work from the bottom up and transpose them to find the final position. If I knew the distance I had to travel and I knew my course, I could work out the D-lat. If I work out the D-lat, I can now apply that to the starting latitude to find out where I end up. And if I've got those two latitudes, I can work out a mean lat. If I've got the course and now I've got a D-lat, I can find a departure. And if I've got a departure and a mean lat, which I've already got, I can find a D-long. Then I can apply that longitude to another position, in this case, the position of the vessel where it started, to find the rendezvous position. So, to put those numbers into context, vessel A was in position 59 north to east, steaming at 15 knots. Vessel B was at 58 10 north, 330 east, steaming 040 at 7 knots. In this question, vessel B will maintain its course and speed. So, the question wants you to find the course and steer, find the time of the rendezvous, and find the rendezvous position. First thing I would advocate always draw a sketch. One of the common mistakes in this question, you've been told the speed was 040 at seven knots for vessel B. One of the common things we often see is people plot 040 at seven knots from the vessel that would be north and east, uh, sorry, north and west of the other vessel. So the whole plot then goes backwards, and instead of the vessel heading south and east, it has to head somewhat northerly to. Uh, to make the rendezvous. Okay, so make sure you draw a rough sketch just so you've got a bit of situational awareness from it. Next thing to do is calculate the distance and relative bearing between the two vessels. So we know vessel A's position, we know vessel B's position. From those, we can calculate a D lat, a D long, and a mean latitude. We've got a mean latitude and a D long. We can work out a departure. If we've got a departure, we can then put that in the formula to get the course. And if we've got the course, we can get a distance. Now, from this example, you can see that the course would be 136.8 degrees true, and the distance would be 68.6 miles. What that actually is, is the bearing of vessel B from vessel A is 136.8 at a range of 68.6 miles. Okay. If you were on vessel A and you set an EBL and VRM at 136.8, 68.6 miles, it would touch vessel B. That's what we've said. Okay. Now, we can't plot 136.8 very accurately. We're just going to plot it as 137. Okay. We'll call it 136.8 but we're just gonna to have to plot it as 137. The next thing to do, update your sketch. Okay, always, always, always update your sketch. Keep it all relative, keep it up to date so your situational awareness is fully up to speed with it. Right. The next thing is to do the plot. So, for the plot, look at your sketch. Think about which way the relative bearing line is. Think about which way the other vessel's heading is and where they are. You can plot this one hour vector triangle absolutely anywhere on your plotting sheet. Okay, so think about the layout of it so it's in a sensible location. Don't start up in the northeast quadrant of the plotting sheet if everything's heading northeast. Okay, start down the southwest and so on. So, what we're going to do is draw out that relative bearing line, pick point T, it can be completely at random. Then lay off one hour course and speed for the other vessel and label that point R. From point R, lay off our own compass course and speed back for an hour across the original bearing line, the line of constant bearing, and then call that point O. Okay. So what we're going to do now is do this plot. Okay. So it told us that the line of constant bearing was 136.8.
as I said, we can't really plot 136.8, so we're going to plot it as 137. Okay. So 137. What we do is we take that line, and from the sketch, we saw we were heading up to the northeast on 0407 knots. So I'm going to start somewhere down here. Okay. And we're just going to draw in that line of constant bearing. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay off 0, 7, uh, 040 at 7 knots from a random point on this line. Okay. Now I know it's heading north and east and the plot's going to look somewhat of a triangle like this. So I'm going to put point T there. You can pick absolutely any point you want. And what you're going to do from that point, you're going to lay off 040 at 7 knots. Okay. So I've got point T where I drew it from and point R where they met. Okay. Now what I do is I say, what speed was my ship doing? Well, in this question, it was doing 15 knots. You might need to extend the scale. If you're doing this on an SQA plot, you will. It only goes up to 12 miles. So you can just measure three and extend the line. So 15 knots. What I do from point R, then strike it back, and that gives me 0.4. When I join O to R, that is my course to steer to rendezvous with the other vessel as soon as possible if it maintains its course of 040 and its speed of 7 knots. And I get a course of 109, I think that is. 109. Okay, so that line is 109 degrees at 15 knots. This one is 040 at 7 knots. And this line, I know it was 137 or 136.8 degrees. But now, if I measure it, that tells me my hourly closing speed. So on this one, my hourly closing speed, I've got exactly 14 knots there. Okay. So that's the plot completed. If we look at it, what I've done, I've used the sketch to pick the layout, drew the line of relative bearing between the two. That never changed. That stayed the same the entire time. I laid off the 0, 040 zero at seven knots. I went back at 15 knots across the original relative bearing line to get 0.0. And that told me the O to T line was 14 knots. So what I can get from the plot then, T to R is one hour of the target vessel's course and speed. O to R is one hour of my own vessel's course and speed. And O to T was the closing speed of both vessels. So the course to steer was 109, and I know the closing speed was 14 knots. Now, to get the next part, the ETA, speed equals distance over time, so time is distance divided by speed. I know the distance at the start that I calculated was 68.6 .6 miles, and I know my closing speed, O to T, from the plot was 14 knots. If I do 68.6 .6 miles divided by 14 knots, I get 4.9 hours, which is 4 hours and 54 minutes. Now, Everybody will have slightly different answers there, depending on how accurately you've done your plot. If you've done it in pen, it's obviously likely to be less accurate than pencil because of the thickness of the ballpoint and things like that. But generally speaking, you should be in the right sort of ballpark. 
Okay, so that was how you get the ETA just by doing the distance divided by the speed. And again, update your sketch. Okay, put a little note telling you what time you're going to get there. Now, to calculate the position of the rendezvous, we knew that the target vessel, vessel B, was going to steam for four hours and 54 minutes, seven knots. Four hours and 54 minutes, seven knots, gives you a distance of 34.3 miles. So vessel B will travel 34.3 miles from its start position to the rendezvous on a course of 040. So you can see, okay, well, DLA is distance times the cos of the course. So my distance was 34.3, the course was 040. So that's going to give me a DLA at 26.3 minutes. Departure is tan course divide times by DLAT, so tan of 40 times the tan of that DLAT gives me a departure. Try and keep departure at least four decimal places. Personally, I keep the whole answer in my calculator and just keep working it through. D long is then departure divided by cos mean lat. Well, we had the latitude of position B and we had the D lat, so we can apply them, as you can see at the bottom left of the screen there, to get the latitude of the rendezvous. If I've got the latitude of the rendezvous and the latitude I started at, I can get a mean latitude. So once I've got a mean latitude, I can do the departure divided by the cosine of that to get a D long of, in this case, 42.1 minutes east. Well, I know longitude of vessel B was 3 degrees 30 minutes east. The D long was 42.1 minutes east. So the longitude of the rendezvous for vessel B will be 4 degrees 12.1 east. So I can update my sketch. Write the position of the rendezvous in there. And as always, at the very end, present your answer to the examiner. Say the course of steel was 109, the time to rendezvous was 4 hours and 54 minutes. The rendezvous position was 58 degrees 36.3 minutes north, 4 degrees 12.1 minutes east. If you always present your answer at the end, then you're less likely to have the examiner miss it. And if they miss it or they have to start trawling through things, then you're making life more difficult for them. Keep it nice and easy. It keeps life nice and easy for you as well.